Text and logo animations are incredibly important. I mean, it's the first thing your viewers will see. It's basically the branding of your content. When you meet someone for the first time, you create a first impression in your mind. So a text animation is your first impression, so you gotta make sure it looks sharp like a duck. Like a what? Well, you guys are in luck, because today you'll learn how to make this awesome text animation in Premiere Pro. First, we're gonna type in a word, for example, basics. To do that, go to the toolbar and click the text tool. Then go to the program monitor and click Click somewhere random. Type in your word and once that is done, go to the window menu on top. Find the essential graphics panel and open it up. Now in the timeline, you can see that the text layers inside a graphic layer. That's where the essential graphics panel comes in. In this panel, you can see whatever is inside this graphic layer. For now, of course, only the text layer is in here. Now let us customize it. Select the text layer and scroll down a little. You can change the font right here. For example, Gotham Black. It's a free font, by the way. Once that's done, go to the program monitor and adjust the scale and position of the text. Make sure the first letter is in the middle of the frame. There you go. Now, next we're gonna isolate each other so that we can animate them. To do that, go to the effects library and find the crop effect. Drag it inside the essential graphics panel, but make sure it's on top of the text layer. Effects will only be applied to all the layers underneath it. Next, click on the crop effect. Then in the program monitor, you can see these crop lines that you can use to crop your image. Simply drag them to isolate the first letter. Next, we're gonna do that to the other letters as well. To do that, hold down Ctrl and select the text and crop layer. Now hit Ctrl plus C on your keyboard to copy them. Press Ctrl plus V to paste it as a duplicate. Now there's gonna be one problem. The crop effect of our duplicate will also be applied to the other text layer which we don't want. To fix that, we're gonna put them into a folder. Select the bottom text and crop effect. Then click the folder icon. Do the same thing for the top two layers as well. Now the crop effect will only be applied to all the layers underneath into that folder. Next, select the crop effect of the second letter and go back back to the program monitor. In here, adjust it so that only the second letter is visible. Then go back to the essential graphics panel. Now you can just copy and paste the entire folder we created. Now let's do it one more time together. Select the crop effect, go to the program monitor and adjust the crop so that the third letter is visible. Now do that for every letter in your word. It's that simple. Great. Now let's close up all of these folders and rename it to the letter that's actually inside. That way we can stay organized. Next, we're gonna make the letters appear like this, which is awesome. But first, I gotta show you this awesome sound effects I found on the Storyblocks plugin. You know what? Let me download this real quick. Now, as you can see, they will simply appear in my project window. Storyblocks is actually sponsoring this video and there's so much more you can do. You can actually get more than a million HD and 4K footage, backgrounds, templates, images, and so much more for just one predictable subscription cost. So you never have to pay an expensive price per clip again. From Storyblocks' curated stock library, you can create high quality video in one place. Now, by choosing from thousands pre-made professional templates for Premiere, After Effects, Apple Motion and DaVinci Resolve, you will take your videos to the next level and speed up your creative workflow a lot. You can create better videos faster with customizable DaVinci Resolve templates. From motion graphics to animated sequences, they are all essential to professional looking content. Oh, and anything you download with Storyblocks is 100% royalty free, so nothing to worry about. To get started with unlimited stock media downloads at one set price, go to storyblocks.com forward slash Premiere Basics. Or just Click the link down below. Now it's time to animate our text, so let's get back to Premiere. First, we're gonna make the letter B appear. To do that, find the transform effect in the effect controls. Then drag it inside the B folder on top of the text layer. Click it to select it and then go to the effect controls. Now move the player to the moment that you want the animation to start. Then set a position keyframe and move the text a little lower. Go back to the playhead and move further in time. Now click on reset to get the text back in the center. Next, grab the playhead again and move a few frames before the last keyframe. Go to position and move the text a little up. This will give it a subtle bounce effect. Next, we're gonna make it smoother. To do that, expand the velocity curves. Select the second keyframe and pull the lever all the way to the left. This will make it start fast and end slowly. Then grab the second lever on the right side and make it go from slow to fast. That will make it snap into place like this. Nice. Now scroll down a little and find the shutter angle. Increase it to 180 degrees and that will introduce a natural motion blur. Now next, we're gonna make the text appear out of nowhere. To do that, find the crop effect and drag it in the B folder on top of the transform effect. Now make sure it's selected and go to the program monitor. Drag the bottom line all the way against the letter. And there you go. Now we're gonna apply it to the other letters as well. First, go to the A folder and expand it. Head over to the effects library and find the transform effect. Then drag it on top of the crop effect in the A folder. Now with the transform effect selected, go to the effect controls. In here, move the player to where the animation is about to start. Then go to position and set a keyframe. Now adjust the position 
position so that the letter A sits behind the letter B. Then move three frames further in time and bring the letter A up above the letter B. Then again, move three frames further and set a keyframe. We don't need to adjust this one because we want it to stay put for a few frames. Now move three frames further again and now adjust the position so that the letter moves to the right. Then again, move three frames further in time and set another keyframe. Now for the last time, move three frames further in time and go to the position property. This time click the reset button. Now you have this super cool static movement of the letter. But as you can see, letter A is speaking behind letter B. So we're gonna fix that real quick. To do that, find the crop effect in the effect browser and drag it on top of the transform effect in the A folder. Select it and go to the effect controls. Go to the movement where letter A is behind letter B. Then set a bottom property keyframe and select the crop effect. In the program monitor, drag the bottom crop line until it reaches the top of the first letter. Then in the effect controls, move one frame further in time and reset the bottom keyframe. And that's all you need. There you go. Now you need to do the exact same steps for the other letters, but we're gonna do one more together. We're basically gonna do the same thing with the letter S. First, hold down control and select the crop and transform effect. Then hit control C to copy it and then simply paste it into the S folder. Make sure it's on top of the text and crop effect, of course. Now select the transform effect and go to the effect controls. Here you can see both effects we just copied. Now we want the animation to start later, so we're gonna select the keyframes and drag them six frames further in time. Now we do have one issue, the letter S is not coming out of the letter B. And to fix that, all you need to do is move the player to the first keyframe of the animation. Then move the letter back behind the first letter of your word. Once that's done, copy the horizontal position property. Then go to the playhead and set it on the second keyframe. Right here, paste the position property like this. Lastly, select the second keyframe and copy it. Then grab the playhead and put it on the third keyframe. Then simply paste it. Now, do this for the remaining letters and that's all to it. Of course, don't forget to add motion blur by increasing the shutter angle to 180 degrees. And that looks awesome already. Next, we're gonna make our word follow along with the letter so that it will stay in the center. To do that, find the transform effect and drag it on top of the folders. This effect will now be applied to everything that sits below it. Before we start, go to the program monitor and enable the rulers and the safe margins. Now, from the top ruler, drag a guide out of it and match it with the horizontal middle of the frame. Then go to the vertical ruler and grab another guide. This time put it in the vertical middle. You can disable the safe margins now if you want. We're gonna need this to remember the middle of the frame approximately. You'll understand why in a second. All right, with the effect selected, go to the effect controls. Now move the playhead to the moment right before the second letter is about to drop in position. Then set a position keyframe. Move the playhead to the moment where the letter is sitting where it belongs. Then move the position a little bit to the left. All right, now grab the playhead again and move it to the moment where the third letter is about to drop. Then set another keyframe. Again, move forward to the moment where the letter is in position and move it a little to the left again. Keep doing that until all the letters are visible. The word basic should be approximately in the middle now. Then go down again and increase the shutter angle for, you know, motion blur. That looks great, but next we're gonna turn the text into a Premiere logo. First, go to the transform effect we've just created and set a keyframe. Then move further in time and move the position a little bit up. Again, move the playhead further in time and position the text a little lower. This will create this bouncy effect. Next, expand the velocity curves and select the first keyframe we just created. Pull the lever to smoothen out the animation. Then click the third keyframe and do about the same thing. There you go. Now in the timeline, trim the clip to the moment where the text stops. Then go to the project window and drag your logo into the timeline. This can be whatever you want. To transition from the text to the logo, find the transform effect and drag it on your logo. Then in the effect controls, set a position keyframe and go to the playhead. Move back in time and bring the logo down a little bit. Now open up the velocity curves and pull the levers of the second keyframe like this. Oh, and of course, don't forget to add some motion blur. There you go. Now next I want you to download my free earthquake pack because we're gonna need it for the next effect. Go to the effects library and click the menu button. Then choose import preset. Select the earthquake pack and there you go. Next, go to the project window and click the new item button. Then choose adjustment layer. Once you have it, drag it on top of your logo. Next, go to the effects library and find the gentle shake preset from the earthquake pack. Then drag it onto the adjustment layer. That already looks awesome, but to smoothen it up, find the VR glitch effect in the effects library. Then drag it on your logo. Head over to the effect controls and go to the distortion tab. Expand it and find distortion rate. Set it all the way to zero. Also, increase the color distortion 
conversion to 100. Awesome, but now comes the sherry on top. On your logo clip, set a cut somewhere random and another one a few frames next to it. Then trim it one frame shorter so that you have a gap here. Now make sure the short clip is selected. Then head over to the effect controls and go to the motion properties. Move the logo to a random location in your frame. Next, go to the effects library and find lens distortion. Drag it on your logo clip. Then decrease the curvature to make it look glitchy. Do this a few times on your logo clip and once that's done, you have an amazing logo animation. Guys, I actually recreated the GTA 6 logo animation and I'll show you how to do that in the video right here on my left. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always, stay creative.